Today in 2017, nearly everyone owns a mobile phone. Our mum, dad, sister, brother, cousin or friend. From iPhones to Samsungs, these devices are always kept close to us, on our bedside tables, our pockets and bags. Within these phones hold social media apps such as Snapchat, Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook and Skype. Focusing on Instagram and Snapchat, these applications came out in 2010 and 2012 and over time they have managed to gain a combined number of 600 million daily users. No matter where you go, to work, university, concerts and festivals, you will without a doubt see a mobile phone. So does the constant presence of your mobile phone disrupt these certain experiences? A music festival is an event full of live music, dancing, food and friends, a kind of experience that could not possibly be disturbed. The popular age group of festival attendees ranges between 18 and 24. This is a similar age group to those who are mostly active on social media. By putting these two elements together, I decided to test this out. Could going to a festival without your phone better the experience of going to a festival? Yours and Ours is an outdoor festival held during spring. The festival goes for two days in Wollongong at Stuart Park. For every festival I have been to, I have always brought my phone, but this time I decided to go without one on the Sunday. Day one with a phone. I bought food and drinks how I always do with a tap card that's chipped into my phone. This saves me from having to carry around cash. I also use my phone to check the set times of what bands were going to be playing throughout the day and into the night. The main two things I used my phone were to take photos, snapchats and check Instagram. Updating my social media involved going through Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat. Throughout the day I was constantly texting friends asking where they were. Because of this, at around 3pm my phone had died so I plugged it into my portable charger I had packed. This extra battery gave me another few hours before it was completely flat at 6pm. Finding friends and getting home at the end of the night was tough. Day 2 without my phone. Instead of paying for food and drinks with my built-in chip, I packed some food and just bought drinks with cash. As for the set times, I had written the band names and times on my arm and leg. Easy. Photos are still precious to me and to make sure this day was captured, I had packed a portable camera. As for finding friends, a meeting spot was made in case any of us had split from the group. One of the white tents with an ATM machine in it was where we would know where to find each other. So was my experience at this festival better with a phone or without one? The pros of going without one included having no worries. I didn't spend my time looking through my bag hoping I hadn't dropped my phone somewhere. Another pro was not being tempted to spend all my time scrolling through social media. My third pro was not having to lug around my portable charger. This device needed a long cord in order to be used, so the tangles in my bag was not appreciated. The only con of having no phone on me was being unable to track my friends when I had lost them. Usually a phone call or text would solve this very quickly. Safety always comes first, so perhaps I might bring an old brick phone that can make calls and texts only. That way the temptation of social media would not be present. Music festivals should be a time you enjoy with your friends listening to music. The distraction of your phone might possibly take up most of your day. If we start learning to leave our phones at home, our experience could be even better. This idea shouldn't just be applied to music festivals, it should also be considered in our everyday routine. This is an issue that we need to be aware of. If our eyes are constantly glued to our phones, we could end up missing out on special moments.